In this video I'm going to be comparing the GTX 560 Ti and the GTX 560 Ti 448 core. Uh, obviously one's a Zotac, one's EVGA. They're both overclocked from their factory settings. Uh, this one is an 850 megahertz factory overclock from 822 and then the 448 is an 810 megahertz from a factory overclock, or excuse me, a factory clock of 732. So this one has definitely the bigger overclock and this one the smaller, even though that this one is clocked 40 megahertz higher. So anyway, I did some reviews and testing in uh, another video on each of these. So now I'm just going to do a run through of the differences that I noticed in you know physically and in my testing okay first we can do a size comparison and we can easily tell that the 448 is definitely a bigger card by what looks to be better than an inch in fact let's take a quick measurement we're looking at about an inch and a half That'd be about right, about an inch and a half in length different. They're both dual uh, dual slot cards, so they're both going to be about the same thickness. This one, uh, the 448, weighs a lot more. No doubt, I'm guessing, in the cooling is significantly ramped up on the uh, 448. So I imagine the extra weight that I'm feeling here is all in the heat sink, which is gonna go further the fan is definitely louder in this one it was as well too so this fan is definitely amped for the extra cooling it is said that these cards run hot I never had that issue in my test bench but then again it's also a test bench so perhaps uh, it's able to keep itself a little cooler uh, I definitely ran warmer than the normal 560 you know this we're talking 384 cores to 448 so we've got a 60 core difference, which is quite considerable. You know, it's uh, that's that's a, that's that's a good shot. That's a 14 percent, if my calculations are correct, uh, increase in cores. So we get that heavier, smaller, lighter. This one was a SLI capable, and this one is triple and quad capable. So that was another difference in as well too the IO we have roughly exactly the same this one has better venting the VGA uh, 448 has better venting and it needs it because that fan ramps up a hell of a lot faster than this fan did in uh, my testing of maximum fan speed not that this one was bad it definitely was able to keep itself cool but uh, this one definitely oop, excuse me this one definitely moved the most air the 448 did Okay, so now I'm going to open up a spreadsheet with the benchmarks broken down and the percentage comparisons there. Okay, so here I have the cards broke down a little bit better with all the data in front of us. Here's the 560 Ti is in this column and the 448 is in this column. And then right next to it here I put the factory clocks. So, like I said before, we had an 822 factory clock. This one was overclocked out of the factory to 850. And this one had a uh, clock of 732 overclocked to 810 out of the factory. So I didn't tweak with any of the overclocking or voltages or anything like that. I just left them as they come out of the box. So like we talked about before, the difference in cores was a 14% difference. The difference in the clocks is... 5%. So the clock speed is 5% slower on the 448 core. Uh, the memory is, you know, we've got a gigabyte to a, a gig and a quarter. The bus is improved as well too by 20% on the memory. So then we get into the benchmarks and it translated into some pretty hefty uh, increases on the 3D Mark 11 P scores that I got. 
of 14% overall and 23% on the graphics. So that uh, 448 really, really is shining ahead above. Um, and then the Vantage score wasn't quite as dramatic. We had a 5% uh, overall and a 9% graphical. And all of these tests were run three times, and I took the averages of the three. Uh, so I feel pretty comfortable with the results I got, unless I have some other issue going on that I, I'm not aware of. And then on the power, we've got uh, the 2.6 pin on the 560, and then we bump up to some more power on the 448. Obviously, more cores, going to need more power. It does run hotter, it does run louder, but it is a significant performance boost in uh, DirectX 11, so I would, you know, I think this 448, like I said in my review, is definitely a sweet spot. I've got a 580 that I run on my gaming computer, and it is also like classified EVGA, and it's uh, 512 core on the 580, and this thing is, you know, nipping fairly close to it. I'm kind of surprised for the price difference. I think my 580s cost me $550. And this thing coming in at three hundred dollars i mean it's it's getting pretty close for the price. I would definitely say that you get more performance for your dollar in this four forty eight even over the five sixty I didn't think the four forty eight was much more expensive for the uh, the performance that you're gaining, so I really feel that this is kind of the sweet spot i mean obviously it's it's early May of two thousand and twelve I mean that's going to change. But in early May of 2012, I feel pretty strongly about this 448 core in that, uh, I would say that's a high mid-range, that $300. It's not overkill like the 580 was in my particular case. You know, I bought the 580 and it's, it's, it's pretty heavy. You know, it, it, it does more than I needed to do. This 448 might have been better for me to run a pair of these in SLI rather than a pair of 580s dollar for uh, for performance but um, yeah, I'm pretty happy with this uh, the 448 um, I would highly recommend it to people that want a high-end mid uh, system and then you can just throw in a second one if it's uh, not fast enough or it starts to slow down definitely a winner here so that'll wrap up my little uh, review of those two cards and then my comparison of those two cards as well so hopefully this uh, has helped anybody make a decision. And as always, thank you for watching.